Fabrizio Pagani, uh, Musenix Global Head of Economy and Capital Market Strategy, joins us now. He's also a former head of uh, the Office of Italy's Ministry of Finance, a very well-qualified guest. Mr. Pagani, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I want to start off with this issue uh, of My Europe's pleasure. capital markets. Um, Europe's capital markets are underdeveloped compared with the United States. And as I was just saying, Europe relies on its banks' channel. Now, there is talk that Europe's banks are about to be offered more cheap, long-term liquidity. So my question to you is, does this simply delay Europe's ability to beef up its capital markets? And how big a problem long-term could that be? Well, thank you and, and good afternoon from Milan. Um, I think, first of all, I would, you know, let's see what the ECB would, will actually decide. We don't know yet for sure. Um, the second point I would, uh, I would say is that uh, moving, uh, moving uh, uh, progressively away from, uh, from, from bank credit towards the capital market is a secular trend. And uh, I don't think you know, a, a single measure can really uh, delay or accelerate. It's something which, uh, which is happening, has been happening in the last year, will continue to happen, to happen in the future. It takes uh, uh, years, perhaps decades. Um, I think there is, a, there is a space for the capital market and, uh, and the banks to, 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 to finance the real economy, to work together in, 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 in parallel and also, you know, to be where the other cannot be. Do you think, though, that... Do you think it's, it's the right approach? I, I, let me put a different hat on, onto your head, and that, is, and that is one of your last career uh, and your understanding of the Italian banking sector, for instance. Is a, is a Teltro, a, a, a targeted refinancing operation, the best way to, to, to ensure that there, is, uh, that there is sufficient capital to back up Europe's growth, so sufficient liquidity? Does, does do European banks have a liquidity problem? Um, I don't think so. I, first of all, I would not single out Italian banks vis-à-vis -vis other, other, other countries' banks. I think Italian banks and European banks have a more general problem of uh, uh, productivity, if you want, and the profitability of business models. So it's not necessarily a question of liquidity. It's a question about uh, having perhaps too many branches or too many, too many banks and too many, too many employees. And also, you know, to, to, to address the, 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 the technology challenges which the industry is facing. Uh, so moving in ahead from uh, the traditional business model in something, something new. And also, in, in, you know, I would put in, 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 in the same realm, uh, cooperating with the capital market in financing the, the, the real economy. I don't think that it's a question of, of competition. It's more a question of cooperation. OK, that's interesting because, because I know that some of the, the bigger banks in Europe are keen to make sure that they are differentiated uh, in terms of kind of how the world sees them right now. Can I just, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you another question about what is happening in Italy, though, and you get your sense of what the, the economy looks like there. We are now in a technical recession. What do you make of the prospects of the Italian economy moving forward from here? The Commission just downgraded growth from 1.2 to 0.2. What is your assessment? Um, I would agree with the Commission. I think we are really uh, facing uh, an important slowdown in the economy. I think, uh, as everybody has seen, the fall has been quite challenging. Uh, so the last uh, two quarters uh, of last year have been uh, uh, pretty bad for, for, for the real economy and, you know, a lot of tension in, in the market, the spread widening. Uh, the beginning of the year seems, but we are really early stages here, it's, uh, it seems a bit better. Uh, however, I, I really, I still think that the the, the next months will be uh, flat or flattish, and perhaps we need to wait for the second half of the year to see some peak up in growth. This is obviously um, put under strain public finance, uh, but at the same time, so let me let me also say that the, the Italian company are still are still doing pretty good. The balance sheet are are, are strong, uh, earnings and are still quite quite high. Do you expect a general election in the near future? And do you factor that into your thinking when it comes to what you see with the Italian economy, though? What is the near future for you? 
What is the near future for, for Italy? I, do you expect a general election? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the near what future, is, I, what I, do you I, mean? The near, the, near uh, future, the near future is 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 between now and, and let's say, the, the, the beginning of summer. I, basically, not before the May, May European elections, but shortly after. I hear April. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's, you know, in, in Italy has, has seen a lot of governments and a lot of uh, early elections, but we never had uh, uh, early elections before two years from the previous one. And uh, last elections were last year. OK, so we can take that off the table. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the broader picture that is affecting Europe at the moment. And I'd, I'd be interested to get your assessment here, too. You, you mentioned a moment ago that, that Italian companies are in actually OK shape. The, the Italian engineering sector is, is, is kind of pretty closely aligned to what happens in Germany. The, Germany, the German manufacturing sector is slowing down right now. What is, your, what is your expectation for the whole of Europe at the moment? What do you see happening here? Because the rate of change in the, da in the data is really quite surprising. Yeah, I mean, Italian, Italian companies indeed uh, feed very much into the global value chain, and part of the global value chain is the German value chain. Uh, so, you know, uh, 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 a slowdown in Germany has, has, has an impact in Italy. However, I don't think that the slowdown in Germany will be permanent. Uh, the same as for Italy, I think in the, in the second half of the year there will be a, 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 a peak up. Um, then, I mean, uh, the, the German and the European markets are not the only market for Italy. Italy has uh, more or less the same... Uh, export to European countries than non-European countries. So the, the, the export of the country are quite uh, balanced. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not particularly worried about uh, export. I think Italian companies have shown also resilience in that sense. They have the ability to, 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 to penetrate new markets and you know, to go deeper into existing markets. So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried. OK. Just finally, um you're not worried. You clearly think that things are kind of OK, but not great. I'm just wondering if the, 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 the kind of the overall story for the banking sector is going to improve, therefore, when it comes to NPLs. I, we, we have a situation of the Italian banks having to, to deal with these NPLs. In the current environment, in the economic story that you see unfolding, is that conducive to those NPLs being rolled off more easily or, more, or in a more difficult fashion? Well, first of all, let me say that NPLs, uh, the stock of NPLs two years ago was above uh, 84 billion. I'm talking about net NPLs. Today, they are down to around 28 billion. These are, these are Bank of Italy uh, data. So the, the, the reduction has been dramatic over, over two years. Uh, obviously, there is still work to do for the banks because 28 billion is still is still an important number. It's becoming physiological, but still 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 uh, hefty. Um, it's what is perhaps even more important is that we not we do not create more NPLs. So we 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 we, we indeed have a, a, a growth uh, picking up because if if there is no growth, obviously the number of NPLs uh, will will increase again, and we will go back to square one. 28 billion. Wow, that's yeah. I, I've certainly seen significantly higher numbers than that. I've seen 200 billion. So that number is. I'm talking about. Lower. I'm talking about net net MPL. Net MPL. Net, okay, net MPL. You've probably okay, seen fine. a higher number for for gross. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. The, the gross number is. But the gross number is still pretty high, and and that number does does still need dealing with. And so so again, Mike. I, my my question is: Is is the environment getting better or worse? Um, I think the instruments are there. Uh, they haven't been touched by the current government, so I, I, don't, think, I don't think there is a, any significant change. We have in particularly what is called the GACs, which is a, a state guarantee for the securitization uh, of the seniors' tranche, um, which is working well, and it has indeed uh, allowed banks to shed MPLs at the a, at a, at a, at a fastest rate. Um, so, as long as these instruments remain in place, uh, nothing will change. 